You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Were you going to do your top ten list? Maybe. No, I don't want to. I hate this here so much. Everything was just so bad. Well, that doesn't mean there weren't good things about this year, too. I guess. You can do this. Just need to get up, find your positivity, and... Oh, dear. Hey, what's wrong with Todd? He's drinking again. That's not good. We're still cleaning out the vomit from July. Wait, what's going on? Todd's off the wagon again. Hey, let me talk to him. Fucking Fallout Boy fans. Hey, so... Todd, I, I know you've been depressed lately about your work, but you've still got your friends and, and your fans, and everyone's been really looking forward to you. Wait, is that our bourbon? You stole our alcohol again? You still haven't replaced all the Captain Morgan you took last time. Dare you, you, you mooch! I can't believe you, this is the last time you're ever invited to any of our- Well, you better handle this. Uh, Todd, I know you said you didn't like this here very much, and I know you don't want to sit there and just praise songs that weren't very good. Well, they're good, and it's probably better than last year's, even. Well, see, there you go. You did more positive reviews this year than I've ever seen you do. That's half your list right there. Actually, some of those songs didn't even make the list. Have enough good songs you've had to cut some of them back? Well, what are you waiting for? Get in there and be the best hooded silhouette of a man that you can be. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This, this year had plenty of good music. I'm, I'm just whining. I'm going to get up and I'm going to talk about the pop music I love. I... Give me a sec. <laughs> Let's do this. The top 10 best hit songs of 2013. Number 10. I have lived in Virginia most of my life, but pretty recently I moved up north and uh... How can you people stand it? It is butt cold up here. And also butt windy. It is cold and windy as a butt. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason people should be living anywhere further north than Atlantic City is because they're trapped there by a giant wall that keeps out the wildlings and white walkers. It's been an adjustment. But I'll tell you one song that has made living in the frozen north a little easier. All I am is a yes, thank you, Indie Upstarts the Neighborhood. This year's winner of the fluke indie hit sweepstakes. Whenever I think this bitter, nasty cold is the worst thing that ever happened on Earth, their song Sweater Weather always jumps into my head to remind me the one good thing about the cold. You can put a sweater on your dog. Oh, <laughs> where's your little sweater? Oh, who's so cute? Who's so cute? Who's a good puppy? <laughs> no, I think this song is about sex, actually. One love, one house, no shirt, no blouse. Just... I mean, just a guess. And I gotta say, this song has done more to make cold weather attractive than a billion let it snows or baby it's cold outsides. Of course, anything is more attractive than baby it's cold outside. The original blurred lines. It's and it's nice to hear these guys bring some rock star swagger into the world of scrawny hipster indie rock. I mean, did you ever hear Foss of the People sound like they were getting any? The closest were neon trees, and they were nowhere near as convincing as these guys. This would be higher on the list, except at the end there's this inexplicable slow part, which... I'm honestly not sure it was a good idea. It kinda kills the vibe. I don't know, does this part represent the hypothermia getting to them as they fall asleep and die? I don't know. Cause it's too cold. But yeah, despite some minor misgiving, this song is still pretty great. And now we just need a song about hoodie weather and I'll be the coolest kid in school. It's too cold, it's too cold, Number 9. 
Since most of the big songs this year were pretty bad, a lot of my picks come from a little lower down the charts. If Billboard said it was in the top 100 this year, it counts. So, even though this song I only heard about four times at best, well, you know, that's, that's more of a failure of the music buying public and not the artist, who is awesome. Always. Mariah Carey is the best, and I will hear no word to the contrary. Ever. Ever. Except for that one terrible movie, which is terrible. But otherwise, yes, Mariah Carey is awesome, no discussion. Mariah Carey isn't the best because she has the biggest range. It's because she is just so damn happy to be singing. The difference between a Mariah and a Christina Aguilera is that Christina makes it all look like grueling work, and Mariah makes it sound utterly effortless. And her duet with Up and Comer Miguel is her best song in a decade. It's the kind of 60s soul classic love song that Springsteen is always singing about. And your mind is with a couple F-bombs, which maybe I wouldn't have used. But otherwise, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, he's singing about his motorcycle. Springsteen definitely inspired at least a little of this. Miguel also more than carries up his half. I think I finally get why he's famous, but let's face it, he's still a little bit out of his league. They're both singing about how beautiful each other are, but uh, there's a reason the camera is lingering on her body and not his. You best believe if that were Usher instead, his body would be getting equal time. And, and I know, this song just barely qualified as a hit, but god damn do I love it. I hope Mariah never stops singing. She's a good way into her third decade of hit making and she just never stops sounding beautiful. You know what's not beautiful though? Hashtags. Seriously, that can stop at any time. <laughs> I'm used to complaining about pop songs, but 2013 was the year that pop songs also started complaining about pop songs. Well, not every song's like that. That have been more accurate a few years ago, but uh, I mean, I get you. It's not like materialism is a dead fat or anything. No, I, I like Royals, I do. There, there's something about Lord's populist stance and her carefully maintained poise that, that really does strike a chord. But still, I'll be honest, Royals is easier to like for what it isn't than what it is. I don't know, I just I just feel like if you're gonna tear down the tired old world that Pops built up, you need to have an attractive vision to replace it. What, what? And one song did just that. I'm gonna pop some tags, only got twenty dollars in my pocket. I'm, I'm, I'm Damn, that is a cold ass honky! Is a thing people apparently say. Walk to the club like, what up, I got a big cock. Now here's a song that clears a way to the bright, shiny new future. No more shall we listen to tedious bragging about wearing the flashiest, most expensive fashion of the moment and all the ridiculous luxury porn that comes with it. No, Macklemore has a bold new vision. Cheap ass secondhand clothes. Yes, this is what we have to look forward to. Yeah, quite honestly, thrift shopping is kind of a stupid thing to rap about, but he sold me on it completely. A sense of coolness that's dictated by something other than a price tag. That's astounding. So update your hot or not fashion list now. Tom Ford is out. Goodwill is in. Matter of fact, the neighborhood can probably thank Thrift Shop for their success too. It's a lot easier to get someone to put their hands in the holes of your sweater when your sweater's already full of holes. I'll wear your granddad's clothes. I, I kind of want this song to be as disruptive to the current state of music as Smells Like Teen Spirit was. Out with the old excess and in with the new, I say. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> Number seven. Speaking of Macklemore, how about a little Macklemore? And I think you need to point out here that Macklemore is more than Macklemore. More. The full name of the act is Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and Lewis is especially important here because this may be the single best beat Lewis will ever make. 
<laughs> see? You see, Katy Perry, you want to make a pump up anthem, it actually has to pump you up. And both those songs start with like high treble piano chords, but Ryan Lewis makes it punch. And for some reason, it never sounds right when I try to play it. What am I doing wrong? And the song just keeps building up on that riff, the drums, the brass band. This is the most propulsive song the Hot 100 spat out at us this year. Of course, Macklemore's presence is no small thing either. Return to the Mac, get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it is. Lord may be tired of being told to put her hands in the air, but even she might give in just this once because Macklemore is just killing it. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great white shark on shark. We Can't Hold Us is probably the song that will make Macklemore. Thrift Shop broke him through, but it should have consigned the one hit wonderdom. Can't Hold Us is a statement of purpose. This is where Mac proves that he is an honest to God superstar, and we'll see where he goes from here. He's got some high expectations to live up to come that next album. But I think he can make it. The ceiling, after all, can't hold him. Number six. <sighs> okay, fine. I don't hate One Direction anymore. And we dance all night to the best song ever. We knew every line. I mean, I don't like them enough to know which one is which yet. I know there's one named Zayn with a Y, which is awful. But that's about it. But yeah, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. Even though just a year earlier, they were one of my least favorite things about being alive. That's kind of the way I am. If you got one good song in you, and I don't mean the best song ever, just one good song, I will cut you some slack, even if you have otherwise been one of the worst groups ever. I mean, there shouldn't be any excusing little things. That should get you permanently blacklisted from polite society. And yet, here we are. Best song ever is just a fantastic song. I mean, I'll have to rename this a bit. Add that, put, put that over here, and uh, cross that out. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I mean that's still something, right? And we danced all night to the sixth best hit song of 2013. You know what? I'm, I'm glad One Direction has started making music that isn't just creepy, manipulative negging. I mean, I wanted to like them. They all seem like nice kids. You don't see them driving drunk and getting arrested. That's all I'm saying. Of course, we'll see what happens in a couple years. But until then, best song ever. Good stuff. It was your best song ever. Number five. Let me show you a few things. Wait a minute. You ready, JT? He damn well better be ready. He hadn't released anything in seven goddamn years. And as long as I got my suit and tie, I'ma leave it out on the floor tonight. And it got fixed up to the nines. Let me show you a few things. Suit and tie is above all else an act of colossal arrogance. Justin Timberlake picked up his career as though we wouldn't notice that he basically ended it years ago. Like, you just walk out, and we don't hear a thing from you for years, and then you just waltz right back and let nothing happen. You can't keep doing this to us, Justin! Stop. Let me get a good look at it. I love you so much. She ain't nothing but a little doozy when she does it. I, I can't help it. I'm just a sucker for a good retro track, and... Spoilers, we've got more of those coming up. And that's why I do my best to live up as much as possible to the sheer timelessness of Justin's vision of old school charm and class. I mean, I'm wearing a suit and tie right now under this hoodie. What? I own a suit. I've, I've had it since like I was 15 and it doesn't really fit the same anymore, but yeah, I got one. I can be just like Justin. Wait a minute. Oh, look at that, I can do that. Oh. Okay, forgive me for that. I, I just want to do everything that Justin does. I want to be this famous just so I can someday afford a music video that makes me look this cool. <laughs> Don't ever leave again. Number four. 
Ever since she was launched onto the scene in 2008, I've repeatedly said my suspicion that Lady Gaga was always just a bunch of pretentious layers hiding an empty hole in the center. But having now listened to her third album, Art Pop, I realized that I was, in fact, completely wrong. Now she's a pretentious empty hole. She used to be fine. Yes, I deeply underestimated how much Born This Way humanized the animatic superstar in the crazy outfits. But that was in the past, and just like applause portended, Lady Gaga is now far into the process of swallowing her own tail. That's not a picture of a snake, by the way, that's just another one of her outfits. But I will say this though, when she gets out of her head, she can still make some damn good pop music. At first glance, Do What You Want is another poker face, a song about being sexually open but emotionally closed off. But if you look closer, you'll see it's actually about her increasingly touchy relationship with the press. You know, Gaga, you wrote a whole song glorifying them, you kind of brought this on yourself. But regardless, for someone whose work can be gloriously messy, Do What You Want is probably the tightest song she's ever written. I will admit, though, that out of all the songs on this list, this is the one I'm the most uncomfortable with including, because, um, one of the people who sings on it is a literal child molester. I, love to hear you sing, girl. I can't emphasize this enough. Do not let R. Kelly do what he wants, do what he wants with your body. He... Because he pees on people is where I'm going with this. Yeah, R. Kelly's on this song and he changes it in all sorts of weird ways. This song is about Gaga surrendering control of her public image while defiantly retaining her identity, but uh, R. Kelly does not think that abstractly. Back at the club, taking shots, getting out it's, it's cute that Gaga thinks R. Kelly would care even one littlest bit about her mind or heart or anything else besides the body. He does not give one shit about those other things. We don't give a but I can't help it, I've always loved R. Kelly's music and his part is just fantastic. I just love hearing his voice. I really wish he wasn't such a disgustingly evil human being. For those made uncomfortable by listening to an honest to god pedophile, Gaga was kind enough to record a new version with Christina Aguilera. It is not better than the R. Kelly version, but it is the best thing Christina's done in a long, long time. Yes, do what you want. A song so good, even Christina Aguilera sounds like she knows what she's doing when she's singing it. That's quality. I wonder if she'll ever have a hit of her own again. I like Macklemore and all, but as far as I'm concerned, the hip-hop world belongs to Kendrick Lamar right now. Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe would be my number one song had it been a hit, and close behind it is Kendrick's first big hit, Swimming Pools Drank, a song about how difficult it is to resist the temptation of the bottle in a culture that glorifies it. And it strikes a deep chord with me. Now, I'm not much of a drinker myself, but I have seen other people depend on alcohol. I mean, I went to college. I done grew around some people living their life in bottles. Even when it's fun, there's an undercurrent of your life being sucked away. Again, not that I know personally. And this song, it just captures it, that relentless need to drown your sorrow, or not even your sorrow necessarily, just that voice in your head saying, just, you know, one more drink. I mean, there's plenty of rap songs about alcohol, but not that many about alcoholism, which is why it kind of had to sneak in under the radar. It's an anti-drinking song disguised as a drinking anthem, or possibly the other way around, because it's a weirdly good song to drink to. I don't know, it repeats the word drank enough that it kind of starts getting hard to resist. It's like a subliminal advertising.
Drink, drink. Bad influence, Mr. Lamar. Faded. Drink. Faded. Drink. Number two. I struggle mightily choosing between number two and number one. This next song, unfortunately, lost the battle to be my pick for the best this year. But it's definitely the one I listen to the most this year. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I listened to it close to every single day since I first heard it. This song is just that good. And what musical genius brought it to you? Baby squirrel use a sexy motherfucker. Having already proven he could do the police circa 1977, Bruno now shows he can also do cool in the gang circa 1980. I didn't even know early 80s R&B was a thing I was nostalgic for, no one ever seems to say any good things about that awkward era of R&B between the afro and the jerry curl, but goddamn, Bruno makes a good case for it. Give me your, give me your, give me your attention, baby. I just want to go back and find all the retro funk music videos I can, although trust me, even when they're trying to be bad at it, Bruno and his crew have much better dance moves than the people he's paying homage to. <laughs> I just love every single thing about this song. I love every shot of the video. And by all accounts, I should be annoyed at the lyrics, which kind of run the same game as One Direction saying, you don't know you're beautiful. But even that kind of works. I mean, it's kind of sleazy lyrics fit so well into the song's joyously cheesy vibe. I really wish Bruno would quit trying to carve out his own identity and just remake old genres. This is by far the most charming thing he will ever, ever do. Treasure it. Thank you! And now, before we get to number one, a quick shout out to some runners up that deserve some honorable mentions. Ariana Grande is so much more talented than Miley, Selena, or Demi Lovato, it's just. it's embarrassing. But she doesn't ride naked on construction equipment, so she's at a disadvantage. Ashanti songs from 2002 is another thing I didn't realize I was nostalgic for, by the way. Of all the electronica hits that came out this year, Clarity was my favorite. This would have been on the list, honestly, except for one little issue I couldn't get around. No matter how I hear it, I can't make the most important lyric make any sense to me. That doesn't make it. I can't put my finger on what's wrong with that, but it just bugs me. Yeah. We'll never be royal. Royal. For the record, I like Lord way more than Lana Del Rey, her most obvious predecessor. Uh, we'll see if she can keep it up. And I will wait, I will wait for you. Okay, I like Mumford and Sons just fine, but you know, the first song I ever heard from them was Little Lion Man, and I'm still waiting for them to make another song that good. I like these guys a lot. I highly recommend their album. Their second song, Kangaroo Court, would have ranked pretty high on the list had it been a hit. <laughs> Just kidding. And now with that out of the way, let's finish this year off. Number one. I've seen a lot of people speculate what my number one song would be this year, and based on what people have guessed, I'm pretty predictable. What can I say? I mean, I thought long and hard, I deliberated for weeks, but from pretty much the first moment I heard it, there was only ever going to be one thing that was going to be my number one pick for 2013. Surprise. She's up all night to the sun. I'm up all night to get sun. She's up all night for good fun. I'm up all night to get lucky. What a fascinating approach this daft punk guy has come up with dance music you can actually dance to. Has anyone told Calvin Harris about this bold new development? Like the legend of the Phoenix. Someone asked me once who are going to be the music makers that everyone in the future will just know and love and will be really shocked that they weren't the biggest stars in the universe back when they were still performing. And I told them, probably Daft Punk. And God knows they weren't ever exactly obscure. I'm probably underestimating how famous they were, but 
but you know, they didn't do interviews. Their stuff didn't get much radio play or anything. They, they don't even have faces. How, how much would your average man on the street have known about them? Anything? I mean, they may have heard one more time a handful of times. Maybe they remember seeing them in the background of that Tron movie they eventually caught on Blu-ray. Like, if you really push them, they might remember some dancing robots in a Gap commercial. I can't believe that ever happened. But I guess I was wrong, because now here they are, like the Legend of the Phoenix. Legitimately a couple of the most famous musicians in the universe with an Honest God smash pop hit. And as much as I've ragged on EDM this year, it seems only fitting that its biggest stars should top my list. Okay, yeah, calling this EDM is a bit of a stretch. For all intents and purposes, this is a classic disco tune, right down to the presence of legendary disco guitarist and producer Nile Rodgers. And I've been a fan of Pharrell since high school, it, it's just great to see him here. Too bad his biggest hit this year is with Blurred Lines, a song which gets worse and worse every time I hear it. Honestly, Get Lucky is kind of too boringly perfect to really merit any discussion. I'm kind of at a loss to know what to say here. A world where Get Lucky doesn't get big is a world that just plain isn't working correctly. I just love this song so much, it's like a part of me. It's like it's always been around. Raise the Bar is exactly what Daft Punk did this year, and I cannot find the words to praise enough. All hail our new robot overlords, Daft Punk, Get Lucky. Best song of the year.